Hello my friends and welcome to D&D Daily. Today I'm going to be doing a deep dive into the Grave Domain Cleric. In this video I'm going to be discussing its features, its strengths, and its weaknesses, as well as give you an example build at the end. Before getting started, I always like to describe how I personally evaluate subclasses. I like to find what's unique in a subclass and make my build around that. So I want to do something that only that subclass can do. Now if what only the subclass can do isn't as good as what other characters can do, I don't care. I'm still going to do the unique thing, it's just the way I play. So without further ado, let's jump into the Grave Domain Cleric. At level 1 we get the Circle of Mortality and the Eyes of the Grave feature, as well as False Life and the Bane spells. Circle of Mortality is really two features in one. The first portion of it is when we heal someone who's downed, making death saving throws, our healing is automatically maximized. So if we're doing Cure Wounds instead of a D8 plus 3, it's going to be 8 plus 3, which is a pretty big benefit. And it really cracks me up that say you have an ally with 1 HP after a combat and they want some healing, that the, that the Grave Domain Cleric might crack them on the head with a stick to do that one point of damage, knock them out, and then heal them for an overall better experience. The second portion of this feature is we also get the Spare the Dying cantrip for free, and it gets upgraded to be able to be used either as an action or a bonus action, as well as we can cast it from 30 feet away. This level of versatility and range means that our party is going to be really, really resistant to death saving throws. I don't say immune because if they're further than 30 feet away, you might not be able to do it, but you can always weave this in. You can cast a big spell, weave it into your bonus action. You can use spiritual weapon, weave it into your action. So it really makes your party very strong against death saving throws, and all just by you existing, which is pretty sweet. Moving into our less awesome feature, Eyes of the Grave is a banner feature. It lets you detect undead in your radius a couple times a day. Now here's the thing, is most undead aren't hiding that they're undead. Maybe a lich, maybe a vampire. So you may be able to pull off something cool with this once in a blue moon, but overall, banner feature. Moving into our spells, Bane is an underrated spell that all clerics get. However, for some reason, it feels like this is a signature spell for the Grave Domain Cleric. And it is worth noting, there are times that this is better than Bless. I think of Bless more as an offensive boost for the party, and I think of Bane as a all-around debuff. It both debuffs their defense and their offense. Their defense because they're not making their saving throws against our offensive attacks and then it nerfs their offense because now they're missing their attacks. Really great and I think underrated. False Life is a popular spell, and in my Death Domain Cleric deep dive, I was questioning why it's so popular. And I looked into it a little bit, and what I came to understand is that it's the low level spell to spam. So when we're higher levels and our first level spell slots aren't being used for much else because we're always casting higher level spells, it's a really good spell to throw on a couple people before combat begins. It's a good expense for our unused spell slots, in other words. If you have a Barbarian, prioritize giving it to them because their health goes further than anybody else's, and so their temporary HP does the same. At level 2, we get our Channel Divinity, Path of the Grave, and holy shit, I love this ability. It's so cool. So what you do is you use your action and your Channel Divinity to mark an enemy for death. The next attack that hits them, they have a vulnerability to. So if you use this channel divinity and your rogue gets off a big sneak attack, it's going to do a ton of damage. And it changes us from being just this stand back support to being a really awesome, a really awesome offensive support. Attack spells like Inflict Wounds, Paladin Smiting, and anyone who can just do a chunk of damage in one hit is what this is designed for. So it's a really good move to hold your action right before that person's turn to do a nice combo. It's gonna suck when they miss, but when they hit, it'll feel amazing. And I've heard it mentioned that people don't like this ability because you could just use your action to do damage, but maybe you don't do as much damage as the sneak attacking rogue, and this helps you synergize. And that's something I love about it, is it sh it's like one of the few things that it's like a t combo, it's teamwork, it has to be teamwork, and I think that's dope, especially in a support. At level three, we get the Gentle Repose and the Ray of Enfeeblement spells. Gentle Repose is a ritual cast that all clerics get, and it makes it so the thing that we cast it on, the body that we cast it on, cannot be raised as undead for 10 days, and it also makes it so if we can't get them revivified in the next minute, it extends that time period for 10 days as well, which will be probably our main use case for it. 
but it's also a fun flavor spell as a Grave Domain Cleric where we see undeath as unnatural and that death is natural that we want to keep things dead. Oh, Rave Enfeeblement, I want to like you. I really do. I like the visual of pointing at someone and sapping their strength with this black ray. It's a cool visual and it fits the flavor of the Domain Cleric. However, it just has too many points of failure. First need to hit someone, then they need to fail a constitution saving throw, then they have to be doing melee strength based attacks, then they have to fail their constitution saving throw again. It has too many points of failure and it's just too unreliable to be casting it often. Sure, go for it every now and again if you're feeling spicy, but there's gonna be better spells almost always. At level five, we get Revivify and Vampiric Touch. Revivify is pretty sweet because we have Gentle Repose already set up for us, so by using Gentle Repose, our Revivify is basically 10 days and a minute. It's just a staple spell. It's a tax on clerics. Every cleric basically needs to take this, and now we don't have to waste our, one of our spell selections to use it. So it's just a nice quality of life feature, really. As for Vampiric Touch, it has a very specific niche for us that if we're being pressured by one enemy, because we are more of a midliner, that's going to be discussed more later, but the Grave Cleric is built for the midline. So say that one of the Barbarians breaks off and is coming to push us, well now we can use Vampiric Touch to use our Wisdom modifier to fight in melee combat, and it's going to heal us so we stay up longer while our team comes to support us later. It's a survivability thing, and it's meant for one-on-one -on -one combat. Because if a swarm breaks through our allies and you're being surrounded by a bunch of wolves, for example, Spirit Guardians is just going to be hands down better. At level 6, we get Sentinel at Death's Door, another feature I freaking love. If our ally is within 30 feet of us and they are hit by a critical, we can just say, nope, that's just a normal attack. And we can do that, our Wisdom modifier number of times a day. So, our whole squad becomes resistant to criticals, again, just by us existing. That's what's really cool about the Grave Domain Cleric, is that just by us existing near our party, we buff the whole party in these sometimes subtle and sometimes dramatic ways, and this really plays into that. I also really like the flavor of it being, okay, we mark this person for death with our channel divinity, and we mark this person for life. It makes us feel like the guardian of life and death. We are the judge that decides, do they go left or do they go right? At level 7, we get the Blight Spell and Death Ward. The nicest thing about Death Ward is it lasts for 8 hours. So you basically cast it and forget it, and they have one extra life. That if they're dropped to 0 HP, they're dropped to 1 instead. Really good for people who can self-heal, but it's also just a nice insurance policy for some of our squishier guys. It also hard counters Power Word Kill, because Power Word Kill would instantly kill you, and this negates that. You don't go to 1 HP, you just stay at what you are. So it counters a ninth level spell, which is pretty neat. Also, you can go skydiving with this with no parachute. You just crush yourself into the ground and survive with 1 HP. I'm not recommending it, but it is an option. Blight is a pretty decent mid-ranged damage, single target damage burst. Now it has some competition with Guiding Bolt. It does a bit more damage. It doesn't do any extra effects. It targets a pretty poor saving throw, but it always does half damage. I'd say overall, I'd lean towards Blight. At level eight, we get Potent Spellcasting and Divine Strikes. I think Potent Spellcasting is better if you have 20 in Wisdom. Otherwise, Divine Strikes is gonna be better, but do whatever you want because it's not gonna be a huge difference. It's the difference between half a point of damage on average. No big deal. At level nine, we get Raise Dead and the Anti-Life Shell. Raise Dead is made almost completely redundant by Revivify and the Gentle Repose combo. However, there is a niche that if for some reason you weren't able to Gentle Repose them or Revivify in that first minute, well, now we can pull them from the dead much later. It's gonna cost more and they're gonna have a bigger negative side effect when they come back, so keep that in mind. Anti-Life Shell has great synergy with the Grave Domain Cleric. Because we're a midliner, we can be pushed, and if the enemy is a melee combatant who can only hit within five feet and isn't a construct or undead, this basically makes us immune to them completely. Now, usually, as I've said before, I like to use my concentration to win fights, but sometimes us just surviving as the medic is winning the fight. That's the number one rule of being a medic, is to survive to heal. So us being alive means that our allies aren't making death saves, they're not getting critted, they're doing huge damage, and they're getting healed. Okay, so maybe anti-life shell is a great win condition in that situation. At level 17, we get Keeper of Souls. When any enemy dies within 30 feet of us, we can heal an ally within 30 feet of us a little bit of health. We basically catch their soul and give it to our allies for healing. 
Now, what's great about this ability is not the amount of healing it does, but the fact that it takes no reaction and it just happens every turn all day. So for long drawn out days, this is just gonna be healing you a little bit every turn. And so it has the same effect that I've been talking about with Grave Domain Cleric, that just by you existing within 30 feet of your party, they're now getting healed. They're now getting anti-crits. They're now not having to do death saving throws. The Grave Domain Cleric has this really cool niche of their existence buffs the whole team, and I love that. So how does this all come together? Well, clerics usually fall into one of two categories. They either get their heavy armor proficiency and they're kind of meant to be these battle mages who get up close and use spirit guardians to chop people up. The Forge Domain Cleric is a perfect example of this. If you haven't seen that video, go check it out. This is the Cleric's aggressive playstyle. Now, if you don't have that heavy armor proficiency and at level 8 you get potent spellcasting, that's telling you that you're a backliner. But our cantrips only go 60 feet, so we're really a midliner. And the question I ask is, what can us as a midliner do for really consistent damage? Maybe spiritual weapon, but if they move 30 feet, we can't chase them with it, so that if they just push us, we're really relying on our front line to hold them there for spiritual weapon to work. Summon Celestial is that, you know, it's a 5th level spell, we're not casting that until ninth level, and that's really consistent damage output, but again, that really comes on late, so what are we doing through levels 1 through 9? Well, we're supporting. That's It's really focused on supporting for this type of build. And just like the Forge Domain Cleric fits perfectly into that melee Gish build, the Grave Domain Cleric fits perfectly into that mid-ranged support. Our whole job is to stay in the middle of our allies, so all of them are within 30 feet. We are the midline. We are the glue that keeps our backline and our frontline together. We are 30 feet from our backline. We're 30 feet from our frontline. If there, we have an ally who's not within 30 feet of us, it's, it's kind of like why. Grave Domain Clerics are kind of like a Paladin, except their aura is a 30 feet foot range. And although it's not considered an aura, we have so many things that work at a 30 foot range that it's our job to stay right dead center of our party and keep everyone in that 30 foot range and tell your party that. Hey, our game plan with me here is gonna be we stick with within a 30 foot range of me, which gives them plenty of maneuverability, but it will keep them alive. Now our sustained offense with the Grave Domain Cleric isn't gonna be as high as other clerics, but we enable our party to do amazing things. We enable our paladins and our rogues and other clerics who cast inflict wounds to just do absolutely insane damage. And I think if you're wanting to play a support build, and me for myself, if I'm wanting to play a support build, I'm gonna be looking at Grave Domain Cleric right away. I think it's a very unique, well-designed support class, and I love it. And I know I've mentioned that we're not doing a lot of sustained damage, but with our potent spellcasting, our cantrips, spiritual weapon, we can do some. And all of those things didn't require concentration, so we can still do our support thing while doing that little bit of sustained damage. So keep that in mind. If you enjoyed this video, I am doing a deep dive into all of the cleric subclasses. I have a bunch already done, and I'm going to do a bunch more. So check out our Cleric Deep Dive playlist to see more. Later!